Hey, this is Paul Solt from Super Easy Apps. Welcome back. I wanna do a final video on how to tweak your user interface and make it look pixel perfect. So we've got this design here and it's a little bit different than what I have here. And we can't really tell without actually looking at the actual pixel positions. So what we're gonna do is just gonna do a quick pass from top to bottom to, to clean up anything. And we're gonna start with just the, the vertical offset. And then once we have that working for everything, then we will adjust the positions in the horizontal direction. So we wanna just go and work our way down. Now again, to get sizing information, I've shown this a couple times and sometimes I'm not always explaining what I'm doing. I'm holding the Alt key and then I can hover around. You can look at the position between different elements when you hold Alt and you hover next to them. So we can see the side-by-side -side relationship we can see the vertical relationships to different UI elements or the actual screen itself. We can select another element and repeat the process to make sure that everything is sort of lining up like we expect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do a pass from top to bottom based on what I have set over on the left. So if we just look at the image size, I, I believe this should match, but it's 174 by 153, so that looks pretty good. And then we're gonna go top to, to bottom. So should be 60 and we have 54 on the left is what we want. So I'm gonna change the Y in the measurement tool. So select the measurement tool and then do 54. And you'll see that that moves around and then we can double check that. We can also just hold the, the Alt key and then we can do, didn't like that. If I've got the Alt key held, I can move this around and sort of align it to where I expect it to be. And this should be centered. I didn't actually include that dimension here, but it should be centered. And then our next asset needs to be at 46 pixels. So we need to select this box down here. And while we're at it, we might as well select all three of these and actually all of this. And we'll just lift this up. We'll hold the, the Alt key and we'll just use the arrow keys to move it up until it says 46. So that looks pretty good. Next, let's check our, our vertical offset here. So we've got eight away. I want this closer, so I'm gonna select the three of these and we're gonna hold Alt and do it to the box until we see five. Looks like we're nine away from this. Uh, let's set the big box first though, since that's kind of a relative position. So this should be, looks like 78. I'm gonna move it down a couple, but I want that text inside to move with it. So let's make sure we select everything in the box. So I'll hold the, the shift key to select that, move it down three, I think. If we hover up top, we should see that it says 78. Then let's fix this label. This should be nine, so we'll go down two. And then let's do the vertical distance between this, 33 right now. We need to get to 29. And then hopefully everything matches. You might be off by a pixel if one of these graphics was a different size. So that's always something to consider is what is the actual size of these different things. Looks like I'm, I'm off by one pixel. So something is not in the right position or I, I exported the wrong measurements on the left. Um, it's okay, we're close enough in terms of our vertical design. I'm just gonna double check to make sure that this is 78 and this is 85, it matches. Anything else that I could have missed? This says it's 33. And when I'm, when I'm saying these measurements, what I'm doing is I'm looking in the top right corner, I'm looking at this attribute. So I'm just making sure that matches what I had mocked up. So we're pretty close. Um, something it looks like got jumbled. That's okay. Uh, we've got our vertical distances fixed. And now we wanna check these um, text positions now that we have this locked into our font size. Depending on the font size, this might be off by a little bit. So looks like I had a little bit more weight at the top because depending on the font, sometimes the fonts are weighted towards the, the top or the bottom. And to get it to fit nicely, we might have to tweak these. And I'm not liking what I had in the measurements. Xcode looks like it might have a different bounding box. And we did notice a difference in sort of how that looked. So that might be part of the, the difference that we're seeing here. 
So that's looking pretty good to me. These don't look like they're in the right spot to me from a visual standpoint, so I might zoom in. And I didn't put positions here, but I really want this to be sort of visually centered. And when I compare the region on the bottom to the region on the top, that's looking much better to me out of my preference. So I think that's pretty good. We just want to make sure that the others are then aligned to that. So let's just... So we should see that these align, and then we'll do the right one. So I just want to... That's aligned. So that's looking pretty good. Is there anything else I missed? Let's zoom back out. So everything looks pretty good to me. I'm just doing a quick check. I think we're matching in pretty much everything. So that's that's how we can tweak our design. Again, hold the Alt or the Option key, and you can get the relative positions. Use the arrow keys to move things around, and you can line them up. Once you have the layout sort of set, you can then test it on the simulator, and we can sort of see, are we matching what we expect back to our original? as close as we can. Sometimes there's gonna be a little bit of differences because Xcode might render something slightly different than Sketch or Photoshop or whatever you're using to mock up your UI. Everything's looking really good to me right now. It, it looks like we're ready for the next lesson. So you've learned how to tweak the settings, how to really customize the UI. We've got the UI design. It looks pretty much like it matches what I was expecting. One of the issues that we have now is it's not interactive. And that's what we're gonna learn in lesson three. We're gonna dive into making this interactive. When I click on something, I expect the keyboard to come up. If we simulate the keyboard, so we wanna simulate the software keyboard, this is what we're gonna see when we run this on a real device that doesn't have a Bluetooth keyboard attached to it. We can't interact with our buttons on the bottom. We can't see them. Uh, we can't enter numbers. We should be seeing numbers, not text. Um, if I hit return, nothing happens. So we've obviously got some work to do, and that's what we're gonna learn about in lesson three. All right, so I look forward to seeing you in the next lesson. It's gonna be a lot of fun. You now have something that at least you can show someone else. It looks polished, it looks good. In the next lesson, we're gonna actually make it work. So that's gonna be super exciting. Thanks for watching. Hey, this is Paul. Real quick before you go, I've got all the source code over here on the right. If you wanna download the source code, go to the link that's over on the right or down below, you can grab that code. If you like that, click the like button. Also, before you go, once you go to this site, you'll see a little form. If you fill that out, type your email address in here and click the download now button. That's gonna send you an email with all the source code. So just check your email in order to get started. All right, so this has got a lot of design resources from Sketch to PNGs to Xcode projects. It's gonna be very useful. Lastly, click the subscribe button, which is over my head. If you want to get updates when I have new videos, I'm gonna be posting regular content on a weekly basis. And then last but not least, just like this video if you found any of the topics that I talked about helpful. I'm gonna be showing you the next step in the next video. So let's go do that.